Okay, so what Chris was saying is, when you look at George and Carol, you're looking at a fighter pilot and a, his, and a math teacher trying to tell you about history. <laughs> so it's got to be pretty simple, Charles. <laughs> this uh, statue we got, and I'm not too sure that the Bureau of Society is not the only one that bought a copy of this from uh, Bob Baranowski up in Camden. But uh, it's up here on the stage. Don't try to lift it up. Uh, but it normally resides at the uh, Chamber of Commerce in Manning. When we started the murals program, we had no idea where we were going with it. Uh, I was president of the Chamber, and I was supposed to come up with a program. And we got the idea from uh, out west, some towns that had uh, done mural programs as a way to get tourists into town. And we thought, you know, that might, might work here. And then the idea was, what would you use for a theme? And we thought, we were smart enough to know that there was a Southern campaign, and there was an American Revolution, and there was a guy named Francis Marion. And when we looked at it, and sort of marked out a few of where he did his engagements, it looked like this was sort of his key area for that. And we thought, well, you know, why don't the residents know that? And uh, so we thought, well, maybe not only drawing tourists, but we can make the local folks realize that they're sitting on top of a real piece of history here. So we did these goals. And that led us into a lot of other projects. Started out as uh, presentations in the schools. You know, we said, this is sort of not hacking it, just having these kids for 45 minutes to tell them about life during the colonial period, during the American Revolution. So we uh, went down to the wildlife refuge and talked to the uh, manager down there. And he sort of liked the idea. And we did four. Uh, reenactments slash encampments on the weekends down there probably got more people to the refuge in one day we did a thousand people down there which is you know and that may have been our downfall because it was uh, you know upsetting the birds and bees anyway we then found Camp Bob Cooper we did eight uh, encampments down there the one this year was our personal last one to uh, do. There are other, some other people that want to try to carry it on, but uh, it's a lot of work, and uh, we aren't getting any younger. And unfortunately, the sad part is that the people that were helping us are aging faster than we are. <laughs> At least the kid, uh, according to them. Uh, like we said earlier, this is our 14th symposium. And Chris and Bob, Bob Swire were probably as much to blame for that as Charles Baxley. <laughs> but uh, anytime we were talking about doing something, Chris had the standard line of, if not you, who? And we never had an answer for who else would do it. Uh, if you look on the, look for Francis Marion on the internet, you'll undoubtedly end up looking at one of these six websites and we have five brochures that we put out in the uh, welcome centers and so forth uh, we run about five thousand brochures a year out from the Bureau society along with charles and uh, chris Sawyer. I think this is sort of a standard thing that you cover no matter what. The war was lost in the South. And Chris quotes a British textbook that she studied when she was in high school in Canada. And they own up to the fact that they lost the whole ball game down here. And I read early on when we started thinking about Marianne in this area, a book by Henry Lumpkin, I think it was uh, 1976, he published it. Then he was the first one that got my attention about the battles in South Carolina. 
And he said there are more battles in South Carolina than the other 12 colonies. I think the other colonies are trying to catch up with us now on their uh, figures, but they're patting them a lot. <laughs> and uh, obviously, if you have more battles, you probably have more casualties, and that's the case, too. These two blue dots up here, this is down way across uh, Lake Marion on I-95, around uh, Fort Watson, Nelson's Ferry, it was called back then. And this is up where if you're going north on 301, which you can't do today because the road is still out from the last year's rainstorm. And, uh, but just by riding back and forth there, Marion cut the two main trails from Charleston to Georgetown up to Pine, Pine Tree, I think it was called. Pine Tree Hill. Yeah, Pine Tree Hill. And uh, so an obvious military place to do ambushes and uh, screw up supply lines, which we all know he did a very good job of. Another part of the whole murals program was not only highlighting the battles, but talking about living back then. And you'd be surprised how few people know that back in colonial times, they could come up the Black River just about to where 301 crosses it today. So that's a long ways. And they would <coughs> cut their trees and so forth, make barges, Float their whatever they were taking down to sell at the coast down there on the barges, then sell the barge the wood, the, sell the barges for the wood, and uh, truck their stuff back up to this area. And you can stop me anytime if you want to correct me. I, that won't bother me at all. I've been corrected by some of the best generals in the Air Force. Uh, this one shows. Uh, <clears throat> Patriots getting ready to Patriot getting ready to leave his family to go join Marion, and you see it's over in uh, Somerton. <clears throat> and uh, you'll see this guy up here a lot because we tried a series of different artists, and their styles were not conducive to understanding the picture. Let me put it that way. <laughs> So uh, we sort of settled with Sarah and Terry, and he likes to come up here. We thought this was neat. This is up in Turbeville, and it's four murals, and although the event did not happen in Clarendon proper, it happened just over the border in Williamsburg County, and it was uh, Henry Wazan's home was burned by, supposedly by Tarleton, in August of 1780. And uh, so this depicts the daughter pointing a British comment here, they're coming to get it. But Carol got an email from the president of the Honda Gullwing Motorcycle Society of South Carolina. And they wanted to have a ride and could we tell them where the murals were because he thought it would be a neat thing to ride by there. And they, uh, oh, by the way, have 1,800 members in South Carolina. I have no idea how many motorcycles actually came, but uh, we thought this was sort of a cool thing they did, was put their motorcycles by the plating so it looked like they were part of them, and then they put that out in their club magazine. And that's Mizan and his wife and kids escaping to the swamp and the house burning. Incidentally, if you go down there, there is a house that was built to replace this one. And uh, that's one of the, right out there was uh, not knowing where the battles were fought and the uh, uh, tombstones are going to pieces. This thing was damaged in the replacement house. Looks for all the world like uh, the first one was described. And it was damaged by Hugo and has not been fixed up. And Carol Helvey, what's uh, the guy's name from that? Ryerson guy? 
Ben, ben Bob. Ben Bob. Mike Ben Bob. Mike Ben Bob is uh, with the Palmetto Conservation Society, and he goes out and tries to wicker deals with people that have things like this. And he went crazy when he went down there because he could identify original painting on the wall and so forth that was back to that period as original. This mural is, <laughs> depicts Marianne sort of leaping onto the scene with Nelson's Ferry. The first time he really came out and gave the British a bloody nose. And we got the idea from a mural out west in uh, Toppenish, Washington, where the artist had a mural advertising the bull fight, and there was a bull charging out of there. And we thought it was sort of neat, and I came by and just cut and pasted pictures off of the internet until I could get the general idea for an artist, a local artist, the lady painted that for us. This is our newest mural, again done by Terry, and they painted it in January. If you recall, there were a few freezing days in January, and uh, so he had fun with his paint in the freezing weather. But <clears throat> it depicts Marion going to look for Tarleton when Tarleton was looking for him. And you know, we'll see in the next mural, Marion leading uh, Tarleton on a chase for about 25 miles until he wore, Marion, uh, wore Tarleton out. This is in Summerton, uh, right on Highway 15, 301. And up in Paxville, we put a mural on the side of a store there. And uh, that is trying to depict that Tarleton is chasing Mary and his guys on the ride from Richburg's plantation in the Jacks Creek area to the Ox Swamp where Mary got his name. And that leads us to our first mural, which is on the fire station in uh, Manning, and uh, it was painted by Will Anderson, who happens to live up in uh, Stateburg, and his parents lived in one of the original uh, Red War period houses. Anyway, it shows Marion and one of his guys here, and uh, Oscar holding the horses over here calling the British to come, or waving to them, come on, let's go, into Ox Swamp. And that's where, where uh, they said, well, everybody say it together. Nobody remembers? Come on, folks. Come on. Still have the game card. That's for, you know. As for this old, the, as for this old uh, fox, the devil, the devil himself, himself couldn't him. catch him. But let's go get the game card. Okay. Don't remember. I'll ask you that later. <laughs> then you know the British did go after him, and he was being chased by probably, I guess, five to eight hundred Brits, and he had on a good day fifty people, and so he decided it was maybe a smart thing to go up and check the weather in North Carolina, which he did, and he logged a little time up there, and. Uh, on his way back, he was recruiting, so this is painted on the side of the big Wiggly in Manning. And so we wanted to depict the kind of crops that would have been planting. And that's the artist's conception of the corn, sort of Texas style. And they got the tobacco and something else in there anyway. But then there's a wagon with Oscar driving Marion on his horse and the guy plowing his field with a rifle on his back. This mural is in Turbinville depicting the Battle of Terracote, which is October of 1780. And uh, unfortunately, we took the advice of some of the folks out west, and their theory was it's better to put the murals on plywood, and then they can be taken away if the building, something happens to the building. Well, that may work up in the, you know, where it's not raining, and, uh, all that, but it doesn't work around here. So this mural is uh, the second one that we will lose due to uh, 
the war just going away. But it shows Marion riding in with his troops and the guys being captured. And uh, it's it very difficult to paint the thing a night battle, you know, so you can really see what's going on. This is a replacement, what the replacement will look like. And it'll be three panels. And uh, the darkness Terry hopes to achieve the effect of night by the darkness. And then you'll have the figures lighted by the firelight. And these guys, you notice, I think they call that Trump boy, where it looks like they're walking out of the picture. So uh, we're hoping to start that nearly uh, next year. This one is about a halfway swamp. It's on a building in the side of Domino's Pizza building in uh, Manning. And it depicts the Marion ambush at uh, halfway swamp. This one is the uh, Battle of Waibu Swamp. And uh, it's one of our really first of the big murals, three panels. So there's the British coming in, and if you look at it closely when you're down there, you'll see that they actually got planking or logs that they're walking on. And if you read uh, uh, Watson's letter to uh, Clinton, he talks about his guys actually carrying the planking with them so they could move the cannons through the swamp. I ought to get them. Applause for that. That's actually good research, right? For a fighter pilot? Absolutely. Not to be close. Anyway, you know, the, the neat thing about the Battle of Wiley Swamp, it was the start of the Bridges Campaign. And for those that haven't learned of the Bridges Campaign, Charles is going to probably talk to you tomorrow noon about a great opportunity to trace the Bridges Campaign. But it started at uh, Wiley Swamp and moved to uh, Cannon Plantation, which we're trying to locate. Moved on to Mount Hope Swamp, which we actually know where it was. On the lower bridge, we actually know where it was. Witherspoon's Plantation, we're probably within uh, shotgun range of. Blakely, we're back to rifle range of where it was. This ox swamp, we know where it was. And the Sam Pitt with it, River, we know where it was. So, uh, but it's a very significant campaign because it's where Marion went from being a guerrilla fighter to being more of a regular uh, army kind of guy in that he made contact with the British for this whole period of time and basically had them surrounded the whole time. Uh, over back over to Somerton, we thought it would be neat to have a entrance in there so that people would see it as they came in. We we have a much better uh, representation of the murals going south in Somerton than we do the north. But on the left side here, we have a big mural. People standing in front, you can see uh, the red coat obviously running. We wouldn't have him advancing. We'd have him retreating, which was. And over on this side, we have the uh, guy chasing him, the Patriot. And then uh, the first, I guess it was the first mural we lost to the plywood disintegrating with some, the uh, scene for the uh, battle of, or the siege at Fort Watson. So Terry did four panels here, shows them cutting the trees, Building the, starting to build the uh, tower in the nighttime, what the Indian mountain might have looked like with the abatis and so forth around it, and uh, finally the guys in the tower shooting on the fort. We did a uh, mural on the side of one of the pharmacies, Anderson Pharmacy in Manning, and the idea was to talk about uh, the way they uh, were taken care of as far as wounds and sicknesses and so forth. 
And so the storyboard tells that. And mentioning storyboards, if you go to the historic markers on the web, on the internet and look them up, you'll find that all of our storyboards are listed on there with the other historical markers. And if you want to know exactly the um, website to go to find that, you best contact my general Carol. historicmarkersdatabase.com uh, This one we did to uh, highlight the transportation back then and that the fact that you just couldn't keep going and going and going that they had to do maintenance on the wagons every day so about once a day they had to stop and take the wheels off and grease the axles and put the thing back on and that's what this is showing And we aren't too sure about which church Marion went to, but we thought, you know, he undoubtedly passed through a church once in a while, and a good logical one would be the one at uh, St. Stephen's. And that's basically the way it looks today, and apparently it's the way it looked back then. So if you haven't been to St. Stephen's and gone and found it, and it's sort of neat to go to church there because the inside is, is just about like it was. I don't, I don't know that they've done any great changes to it, but it's got all the boxes, the pews were in and so forth. So anyway, we've got three panels and it's got Miriam leaving Pond Bluff, driving by the swamp and then arriving at St. Stephen's which is a little bit unrealistic, you know, I've probably been a good day's drive. This one is a, another wild idea we got from the, uh, I forget what you call it, but with, you normally see it with the pink horses hidden in the uh, trees. Camouflage. Camouflage art, yeah. And, uh, we got a picture of an Indian brave with a bear skin on, on a horse looking down, the horse is drinking water, and an and Indian on a horse is looking down in the water, and the reflection coming back up is of a bear. I thought that would really be neat, you know, to do something like that. So we talked to Terry, and he came up with this idea of showing you're breaking the wall down, and lo and behold, look what you're seeing behind it. And it's very in here, but if you look closely, that's a wolf's, or a fox, looking back at him right there. So we thought that was sort of neat. And then the story about, you know, Marion. There you see it. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Sure. But what's the best medium to make these murals on? Uh, I mean, hieroglyphics is a, is a story in pictures, picture, and, and that lasted 3,000 years. What can we do to preserve these things? Well, you varnish them, shellac them. What yeah, there is. What what Terry uses is he uses acrylic that was developed for uh, Disney Land. That's actually developed for uh, Disney World. <coughs> yeah, it's an acrylic. About a hundred, uh, about a hundred dollars or a hundred ten dollars a gallon, and uh, it actually is a clear acrylic. The after he finishes painting the, the mural, he covers it with uh, the clear acrylic. Gives it two coats of that over the top of it. The lattice can probably tell. I think it's probably pretty similar to what goes on the automobiles. The acrylic topping on that, but. Uh, then every time that he comes back up and does another mural, we get him to go back over and touch up all the murals. And like in January when he was here, he went through and uh, coated all the murals. And a weird reason, we could go do it, but another guy, some of you know him, uh, Wright Turbyville, and I went out and we coated a mural 
and we did a good job. We used two gallons. And when I told Terry, you know, how much do you use? He said, well, not near, you know, a half a gallon would have been plenty. <laughs> so I don't know if I answered your question or uh, but talked you know, around it. Georgia. Their code protects it from the UV. Uh, it's really hard on the bills that are west walls that face the afternoon sun. That seems to burn them out. And it also helps uh, graffiti. Any problems with that? generally wash it right off. So um, that's why we have a clear coat of at least once every year or two to, to preserve them as well as, as touching them up. George? We've been very fortunate as far as having any uh, graffiti. Uh, we've had a few birds mark them up. <laughs> but uh, we had one mural here with graffiti up in uh, Turbyville. And it didn't take him long to find out who it was, and it was somebody who was upset with his girlfriend who went to the church or restaurant, whatever it was, right across the street. And uh, I don't know what happened to them, but uh, the mural got cleaned up, and the next time one of the artists was here, they went up, touched it up, and we're good to go. George. Another row. George, on the murals. When he does that, does he put like a gesso, not a gesso, like a, uh, a, a base down, like, uh, like stucco or something that he paints into, or is he painting directly on Oh, yeah. What well, the question is, is what you need to prepare the surface. And the stucco or the concrete blocks, you get uh, regular uh, primer. And uh, Terry tells us what color to tint it, and we tint it. And, we try to roll it on, but it, if, they, if he has to do work on the wall with a filling it in or anything, he just should do it himself because he can go ahead and put the caulking in at the same time as these uh, priming. But uh, yeah, all the murals, all of it. Now there is the one that you saw on Anderson Pharmacy, the uh, sick guy being treated. That one Terry talked about. Uh, using this laminated material, a thin layer of aluminum, aluminum on the side of styrofoam. And the thing is not, I don't know, maybe three sixteenths of an inch, eighth of an inch thick. And we had to do that because the uh, building has uh, plastic siding on it, and there was no way you could paint on that. So <laughs> he got the material and he used it down in Florida. He found out about it from some people up in Michigan that he paid it for, and they said, hey, we did a mural on this too. And uh, so he said, I'm not going to do that on there. It worked real well. It is holding up real well. Will you ever feel compelled to take a wall down? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well,
give us equal to what we could raise, they'd match it. So we got the money and gave it all to uh, F.E. DeVos, Central Carolina Technical Center here. And uh, you have, the result is that you have this uh, welded art sculpture. At the present time, they're in the process of uh, coming up with a fox, like this little guy right here, to put down here in the side. So it's continually, like each year or so, that a class will add these reeds or add something else to it. They painted him up last year instead of leaving him uh, rusty, and so uh, it's sort of neat the way they uh, they like it too. This is another uh, project that fell on the Bureau Society. As some of you know that Murray's Ferry was across the Santee River, roughly where Highway 52 crosses uh, the Santee now. And they tell me that at one time when a road was first built there, across there, and they did away with the ferry, on both sides of the uh, causeway, on both ends of the causeway, on both sides of the road, there was a plaque like this. On one side, it told about Burry's Ferry and Marion and so forth. On the other side was the list of all the road commissioners and the senator and all the politicians. We got a call from a guy up in Ohio, and he said, my neighbor has this plaque, and he described it, and he read me this whole thing on here. And he said, my neighbor wants to scrap it, and I just got the idea that somebody down there might like to have it. And we said, yeah, we'd like to have it. And we talked back and forth for a couple of days, and they finally decided how much it was worth for scrap value, and could we match that? So I went up, again, I went begging around to some of my friends, and we came up with the money for it, and we also had another guy uh, who used to be uh, work with us at the encampments. He and his wife were at a cabin they had up in Ohio. We called him and said, could you pick this thing up for us? And they said, oh yeah, we go through that town all the time. So they picked it up and brought it back, and it now lives in the uh, Chamber of Commerce office also. They would truly love to have it over in Williamsburg County. And they tell me that they have the other half of it, the one that has all the politicians on, but it's in somebody's barn or garage, and you know, I don't think we ought to give it to them until they bring that one that they have to their museum. And the other neat thing about it was that this was mounted apparently on brick uh, pillars on both sides of the road. And whoever was telling me about it said, well, yeah, it was originally brick, but then later on they painted it white. And I thought the white paint that was uh, smeared on and around the edges was probably somebody who was screwing around in their garage or something and paint and, you know, got paint on it. But it was apparently from when it was painted, when the pillar was painted and right there where it was. Somehow it managed to make its way from the Santee River to Florida, and this guy found it in a yard sale type of thing in Florida, and then it made its way back to Ohio, and then he found us, and it made its way back down here. So we're, we're keeping it inside, so it's protected. Now I can't travel anymore. <laughs> then we got a call one day from uh, some people at Southern Living, and they wanted to know about the mural program. And so we chatted with them, and they decided that they uh, wanted to run a little story about it. So we uh, said, yeah, come ahead. Turned out we didn't know how to take the uh, pictures for them, so they sent their uh, photographer. And you'll see the little picture up on the right is on our first mural where Francis Marion got his name on the swamp box. But when they talked to us about this picture, they said, okay, well, tell us about the mural that has the church in it. And we said, what church? We don't know what you're talking about. So we had to search around 
and finally figured out that they have taken this unusual angle of this mural so that they have the First Baptist Church, Catherine, right in the background, and it appeared in Southern Living, just like that. And so we were very pleased to, to have our Manning mural and a part of our Turbeville mural show up in Southern Living. And when we talked to the folks at uh, Southern Living, we said the idea is if you get off the interstate, go through uh, Summerton, you stop at the Summerton Diner, you stay on 301, you come through Manning, look at the murals and eat at the Manning restaurant, you stay on 301 and go up to Turberville and eat in Chat and Chew. They said, Chat and Chew? We said, yeah, Chat and Chew. So they really thought that was me, so they basically wrote that up in here. Uh, obviously, sometime after May of 2010, we were eating in uh, Chat and Chew and we walked out. And as we were getting in the car, the guy that owns it, Bernie, came running out with this lady behind him, waving a paper, and this lady was, had this article, and they were trying to do it. And they were starting at Terminal, and they wanted to know how to go to do it backwards. So <laughs> we thought that was pretty funny. And then this depicts our uh, various encampments. You know, we've had, uh, just about anything that they did back in those kind of days, we mimicked some very well, like wheel riding. Nancy Keith, who you saw when you came in, is a real expert at quill riding, and she, uh, we had that every year. The joiner was a, a really funny thing too. There's a guy over at Marion who's done the reenacting and is very proficient as a joiner, and. He was here. He had to go back to uh, Marion on Friday. We were doing the event on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and couldn't be there on Friday. At the same time, they were having a elder hostel at Camp Bob Cooper, and they wanted the people to wanted us to let the people go through with the kids on Thursday, and we said sure. We found out that one of the people in the elder hostel had taught woodworking for 30 years as a high school teacher. And so he was really fascinated with that. He said, I know how to do all that stuff. So we said, would you consider staying on Friday and doing it for us? And you know, he said, yeah, I can do that. So he worked with Emily on uh, Thursday and on Friday he did the whole thing himself which is sort of neat. And there's Marion too. We don't have anything to do with that, but I think it should be there. That's what it says on the scene. Him being a fighter pilot, having a phone, the F-16, I gotta put it in somewhere. But if you go, if you go down to the Indian Mound at um where was the site of Fort Watson on Santee National Wildlife Refuge, Georgia back one place. Those same words are carved into a stone that we have down there, and it had a very strange way of getting to us as well. Bob and Christine Swagger discovered it at Black's Fish Camp. If any of you know where that is, on the diversionary canal between the two lakes, it was being used as fill in the road, in the driveway. And they recovered it, and it traveled around a little bit until we found a home for it at the Sandy Refuge. And we think that it might have been a temporary marker over uh, the grave at one time. But Mary Esther did not put a marker on his grave when Marion died. Later there was a marker in French on there. And then at some point it was broken. And then we think this one might have been an interim in there. And then now the Park Service is handling it and, and they've got it cleaned up. And we hope it'll stay cleaned up pretty well. So uh, we keep hoping that that would be make the Charles Baxley uh, research list to find out where that stone really originated. Uh, these are the websites that uh, the Mural Society, i.e. Carol, maintains for us. And some of you know, probably more than we do, but 80,000 hits a month and we we think that's pretty good. So that's about a million people a year are 
looking at Francis Marion stuff related to Clarendon County. Again, the 5,000 brochures. We have little table tents to tell about the, what's going on in Clarendon County and the area at uh, 20 locations, 140 of those. So thank you very much. And uh, if it wasn't for the fact that uh, Carol has ruled that we will not be where you have to shovel snow, <laughs> that is an actual picture out in California taken on the 19th of this month. And that little distance from right there to right there is about six feet. I got to pick another picture like that with a photographer with his uh, camera standing there. So winter is coming, folks, and we enjoyed it. And let's take a break, and we'll let you know at about 6 o'clock to reconvene. Thank you very much.